Hey, people across the world, this is Graham from the RecordingRevolution.com, and we're back with five minutes to a better mix. We're looking at 31 mixing tips in 31 days. And today I've got one more philosophy type video for you, and that is to use what I call the mixing console mindset. The idea is simple. When you're about to get ready to mix, there's too many decisions you're going to have to make, too many options to choose from down the road, things you could possibly do in your DAW, that you want to eliminate as many of those decisions as possible or make them ahead of time so that you can just focus on the music and actually make a great mix. And one of those decisions I like to just get out of the way early on is which EQ and which compressor am I going to use? Now, I know a lot of people don't mix this way, and obviously you don't have to mix this way. I'm just sharing with you what helps me. Uh, I like to think of my DAW as a mixing console. I like to think of it as an actual old school console that has a strip going down, and you're going to have one EQ on the channel and one compressor, and they're all the same. I mean, the whole console is made up of you know rows and rows and rows of the same thing, basically. Of course, you can use outboard gear on a console and pick your own EQs for flavors and your own compressors, but let's pretend you're just using a console and pick one EQ and one compressor that you're going to use for what I consider 90% of the mix. I, I, I definitely understand you're going to use maybe something else down the road. I don't want you to hold yourself to some useless limitation, but I find it very helpful to say what one EQ and what one compressor am I going to use on this mix for the bulk of my tracks, as if that's all I had. So if you are like in a stock DAW and you're in Pro Tools, you could say, I'm going to pull up the compressor limiter. Okay, that is a transparent compressor that I can dial to any piece of audio I need. If I need fast attack stuff, slow release, uh, with a lot of compression for a snare drum to make it fatter, I can do that. If I need slower attack stuff to make my acoustic guitars still punch through and keep the transients, I can do that all with one compressor. Use that on every single track. And then, you know, pull up an EQ also. Grab the seven band, right? You can have all these bands. You can put a high pass on. You can sculpt it all. Pretend that this EQ and this compressor are in a row going down your console and you're going to use those on every track. EQ and compression are your two main tools to really get the bulk of your mix anyway. I mean, you should be able to get a rock and mix with just EQ and compression. And so pick your compressor, pick your EQ. If you have a channel strip, you can use that. That's That makes it even easier for you. If you've got something like the SSL channel strip, I do a lot of that these days. I'll throw this on almost every single track and I'll just use this for most of my mix. Why? Well, it's easier and I don't have to think about two plugins and they're right there. I mean, it's modeling an actual console in SSL and it's right there in front of you. The EQ goes down, you got the compressor, you even have a gate, right? If you have the Avid channel strip, grab that, right? Grab that here in Pro Tools 10. Same thing, modeling the you know Euphonics System 5 console. You've got a compressor, you've got an EQ, you can change the order of things. Treat it like a console. But again, even if you don't have a channel strip, just grab your EQ and your compressor that come in your DAW and use them like crazy. Because two things are going to happen. You're going to save time because you won't be looking through way too many plugins and go, oh, what EQ do I want to use? Oh, what compressor do I want to use? That It's a waste of time for many of us. And the problem is, is you never learn how your compressors and EQs sound if you work that way. Because you really don't, you never spend as much time as you should auditioning them. So you're just going to pick a different compressor for every track or a different EQ for every track. And you never quite know what it's doing on your track. Here's a great way to learn. Take one song and only use, let's say, your stock compressor and your stock EQ. Use them for an entire song or an entire album. Having to use an EQ and a compressor, the same plugin, on every type of material, acoustic guitars, vocals, drums, loops, strings, you name it, you will learn what that plugin sounds like and what you can do with it. And then on your next album or your next song or your next client, use a different EQ and a different compressor, but use them consistently through that mix or through your set of mixes, and you will learn what they sound like right? You can get the job done with any EQ and any compressor in my book, but here's an opportunity to go with that old school, simplified, one EQ, one compressor, mixing console mindset, and you will 
learn your plugins better, and you will just mix faster. Because when you open up a new track, or it's time to get to that random lead guitar part that you forgot to work in the mix, or you're not getting it to sit right, you know what to do. Pull open your one EQ, pull open your one compressor, get to work. And then later on in the mix, if you really want to tweak with some other effects, other compressors, other EQs for an effect, go for it. But you should be able to get 90% of your mix done with one EQ, one compressor. The mixing console mindset. Make these decisions now, the rest of the mix will be easier, trust me. If you do all the stuff that we've done this first week, man, the rest of the mixing process will work out just fine. That's why I always start with the foundational stuff with 5 Minutes to a Better Mix, because it sets the pace for the rest of your workflow and the sonic characteristics of how your mix will turn out, okay? Hope that helps. Hope you're sharing this with somebody that you think might use it. 5 Minutes to a Better Mix. We'll see you tomorrow.